Hello percussionists! Welcome to our Soundtrap project where you're going to be making a song that is all your own. You guys have kind of caught a break from uh, doing anything mallet or pitch related in this class, so we're going to get you right back up to speed on that stuff. Here's what I made, and remember, what I was looking for is something that uses tonic and dominant chords and has a melody, and has three tracks. That was really all that I, I told you. Here's what I made. Take a listen. So I, I think that that sounded ended up coming out pretty well. So I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with that. But I know it's a little bit weird using this software. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to run through how you can do what I did through methods that are not incredibly complicated and don't require a whole lot of precision with playing your keyboard like an instrument, but rather manipulating this software as though it is. So percussionists, it's a very good thing that I am making this video because. I actually just accidentally deleted my project. So hopefully by bringing you through this process, I'll have that same exact project back together at the end of the video. So this is now pretty high stakes. Um, without further ado though, let's just, let's get into it. So the first thing and probably the most difficult thing in my opinion are the chords. So what you wanna do first is you wanna decide on a major key. In my case, I ended up with E flat major. All right, so we're in E flat major. It says so right down here, we're good to go. So next step, figure out what chords those, those are going to be. E flat major, that was the same key as long, long ago. Remember, your tonic chord is built off of scale degree one, built off of do, and it contains do, mi, and so. Do, mi, so. Your five chord, or your dominant chord, is built off of scale degree five, and it contains solfeges, Sol, Ti, Re, Fa. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to open up a synthesizer. This is the one that I was using before. And I want to figure out what notes here I need to use and try to figure out how to get my hand in a position that makes those work. So first things first, in keep E flat, I definitely need a E flat, right? That's, that's Do. I need a G and a B flat, because that's Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, just like on one of your marimbas or another keyboard instrument. So I gotta figure out a way to get my finger to D, B, and J. There we go. Nice and easy. Don't even worry about what rhythm you want right now. I promise. Check this out. Record. It's gonna count me in. That's what I'm gonna do. The reason why that's what I'm going to do is because now I can just take whatever I have here, drag it back to the beginning, carefully, drag it back to the beginning of the track, or the region I should say, make sure everything's all lined up, and now I have something that's starting at the beginning of this region. And I'm going to trim that down to a very small length. This way, depending on whatever rhythm I want, I can make it longer or shorter. And it's always going to be the same chord, which is a fantastic little trick. Now, another really nice trick, do, mi, so. If you remember those voice leading charts, you know that what I already have here is really close to so, ti, re, fa. So here's what I'm going to do. Click on this, control C, control V. Whoops, I guess I'm not going to do that. Control C. Control V. There we go. It worked that time. Check it out. Here's Do. I'm just going to make that T. Here's me. I'm going to bring that up to Fa. You remember this now? It's coming back, right? So is already there. But I still need a Ray, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down to Do, Ray, up to my F. Do, Ray. Click on this pencil here. So was B flat. Click on the grid where B flat is. Boom. Check this out. I have my tonic and my dominant chords. So without having to worry about synchronizing the weird delay with the keyboard 
in this software, I already have what I need. The next step though, now that you've got this, is I guess you have to ask yourself now the question, do you want your tune in major or minor? If you want it in major, then you're good to go. You're all set. If you want it in minor, very simply, take this note, your second note, the third of the chord, the middle note, and just bring it down one grid place, a half step. Change your key to whatever you were in, minor. Now, here's the tricky part about that, is that E flat minor, that is not a nice key. That is the relative minor to G flat major, which has six flats. So I really recommend, really recommend that you pick a minor key, if you want it in a minor key, that you know. A minor is a, or, yeah, A minor is a fantastic one. G minor is great. D minor, that's the relative minor to, uh, sorry, not D minor, C minor, relative minor to E flat major. Those are all great choices. This software is so smart, it knows how every single one of your notes that you place on this keyboard right here, on this piano roll, how every single one of those relates to whatever your key is here. So check this out. I'm going to fix this and make sure that it starts on G like it should. Oops. Gotta be careful about that. So here we go. G, B flat, D. Check this out. It just went to E flat minor. It just knows exactly how every single pitch relates to whatever key you're in. So when you change keys down here, it will follow. So if you end up in a weird key like E flat minor and you don't actually want to be there, okay, fine. Don't change anything. Just change this. Make sure that it is in the key of E flat minor or whatever weird key you ended up in, and then change it to a key that's more comfortable for you. So you've got your chords here. Now, what rhythm do you want them to be in? It's kind of boring if you just do one, one, five, one, do, do, so, do, with a boring rhythm. So what I want you to do is think of a rhythm that you like. Think of, think of the, like any rhythm at all. It could be a rhythm that you like to play on your drums. It could be a, a repetitive rhythm that you've heard from a song that you like of the chords. And I want you to try to transcribe that. Here we go, working on those skills we worked on at the beginning of the year. Again, try to figure out what that would look like on a piece of paper. Where are the eighth notes? Where are the sixteenth notes? Where are the whole notes? Whatever it may be. Once you've got that rhythm, now you can start manipulating these to match up with it. First thing you want to do is ask, what is your smallest rhythm? In my case, it was an eighth note. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this piece up here. This is what I call the ruler, okay? And if you notice, when I zoom in, there, be, there are a lot more dots than when I am zoomed out. If I zoom out a lot, check this out. One, two, three, four. That's B, one, two, three, four. And then measure two starts. So those are my quarter notes. If I start to zoom in though, you'll notice, boom, they're broken up. What do you think those are now? One and two and three and four and doot day, doot day, doot day, doot day. In my case, in the case of mine, the rhythm I was looking for was one and three, one and three. So now what I need to do is get this out of the way. Here's my eighth note. Control C again, control V. Line this one up with the third note, or B3, I should say, right there. Take a listen now. Cool, right? So this is a little short. I don't want it. I don't want it to be that short. Very simple. Zoom in, stretch it out for as long as you want. Now check it out. Nice and easy. And I didn't have to play anything on my keyboard in rhythm, which can be a real hassle. But now you're like, okay, so now I have to just keep doing that over and over and over again? No. Let's say I want the next measure to be exactly the same. Start on measure two, control C, boom, there it is. Nice and easy, right? Over here to measure three, I want the first two beats to still be on that one chord. So I'm gonna copy, or control C, control V, boom, there they are. But I want beat three 
to be this 5. So I'm going to leave that there. I also want beats 1 of this next measure to be my dominant chord. Boom, boom. There they are. Now I just have to zoom in, stretch this out for how I want it to be. Click down in this bottom corner, stretch it all the way out to beat 1. These two are already good to go. And then at the end of this measure, I want to go back to my 1 chord, my tonic chord. Click on here, Control c Click over here. I believe that's right. Yep. Control v Boom! There it is. And in my case, I loop this for 8 bars. Guess what? Control c Control v and now I have my chords all done. So to review that process again, pick your key first, figure out the chords of that key, tonic and dominant, play each chord once, if you want minor, do a last double check before you move on. Think of a rhythm you like and try to transcribe it. Trim each chord to the length of the smallest note using the ruler at the top of the screen right here. Copy and paste at the start of each new sound and lengthen each notes from those smallest notes to your larger durations like I did with these ones. And just use judicious use of that copy and paste function and before you know it, it's good to go.